Good morning. Today is Bible Sunday, where we celebrate the glorious gift that God has given us of his word written down and accessible. However, while remembering this incredible gift, spare a thought for those for whom this is not a right, for whom the possession of this precious gift is a crime. There are many parts of the world where what we take for granted is not possible without huge risk. Let us thank God that his, that his word is ours to read, discuss and live by. Now if you want to join me in this prayer to honour God for giving us his word in human form and in this amazing book that we take for granted. So we'll say together. From the very beginning was your word, which spoke this world into being. Your word which thunders from the skies. Your word which flows like mountain streams. Your word which whispers in morning breeze. Your word revealed through kings and prophets. Your word revealed through angels' praise. Your word revealed in humble service. Your word revealed through a tiny child. Your word alive from the beginning of all things and to eternity. Amen. And now we're going to have uh, Lord for the Years. And if you've got a hymn book, it's Mission Praise 428. <laughs>
for our confession. I'm going to start today with the, uh, some verses from Isaiah 55, which is one of the possible readings for today. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the God, and he will have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways, are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. So in a moment of silence, let us all consider the thoughts we have had that would not be God's, and the ways we have gone where God would not have gone. We lay all these wrong thoughts in action at the feet of our ever-loving and forgiving Lord. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent. Have mercy upon you and upon me. Pardon us and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll now say together our collect for today. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour Jesus Christ who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now if you'd like to stand, we'll sing All Who Are Thirsty. It's uh, in Mission Praise 1025.
The first reading is from 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 14, to chapter 4, uh, verse 5. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God breath and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus who will judge the living and the dead and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word, be, preached, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel reading is from John chapter 5, verses 36 to 47. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. I have testimony weightier than that of John, for the works of the Father has, has given me to finish the very works that I am doing. Testify that the Father has sent me, and the Father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. You have never heard his voice, nor seen his form, nor does his word dwell in you, for you do not believe the one he sent. You study the scriptures diligently, because you think that in them you have eternal life. You study the Sorry, um, these are the very scriptures that testify about me. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know you. I know that you do not have the love of God in your hearts. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. For if someone else comes in my own name, you will accept him. How can you believe since you accept glory from one another, but do not seek the glory that comes from the only God? But do not think I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom your hopes are set. If you believed Moses, you will believe me, for he wrote about me. But since you do not believe what he wrote, how are you going to believe what I say? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning on this Bible Sunday. I have followed the last two services online. So it is good to be with you live. I've got to tell you that as we're having a short prayer before the service, the voice came and said, can you speak up? I can't hear you. I think it was Kate's phone. Now, it may have been from God, so let me just check. Can everybody hear at the back? <laughs> right, then, Lord, I hope I'm speaking up. 
a couple of weeks ago, Sue, in her testimony, told us of two Bibles that she'd been given when she was very young. And I'm sure that some of you, perhaps many, have Bibles with a story, perhaps a memory of the person who gave it to you, the place where it was given to you, or the occasion. For example, Jenny was presented with a Bible in her uplifting, joyous, licensing ceremony here at St. Peter's. And how good it was to have a church full of folk. There will be Bibles with their own stories. For example, in preparing for a Remembrance Day service, I came across of how an account of how a soldier in the First World War had his life saved from a fatal bullet by having a Bible in his chest pocket. You may have found that included in your Bible is a lot of interesting supplementary material. Time charts, which I don't know about you, but I get it all out of sequence as to what and when. Maps, photos and drawings, and I love those in the Good News Bible by the Swiss artist Annie Vallotton. Brilliant, simple line drawings. In most Gideon Bibles, there are very helpful suggestions of where to look in both the Old and New Testaments when one feels anxious, doubting, weary, or wanting to be a Christian. This one also tells, and I'd forgotten because at the time I was in the police station party getting a mug back in the 1950s on the Queen's coronation. But apparently these words were said. We present you with this book, the most valuable thing this world affords. Here is wisdom. This is royal law. These are the lively oracles of God. The Queen must have a palace full of all her gifts from visits and visitors as well and probably will have a lot more when she meets all the most of the leaders of the world at the COP26 summit in Glasgow this coming week. But the most precious is the Bible and the reading from Timothy tells us why. Paul says in that letter that all scripture is God breathed. Other versions say God inspired. And as we say after the gospel reading, this is the word of the Lord. The scripture which Paul is writing about in his letter would not have included the New Testament as we know it today. Paul's letter was written in AD 64, maybe a year before Mark had started to write the first gospel. The scriptures Paul refers to are those that Jesus himself grew up with and learned as a child and throughout his life quoted from. The words that he used to reject the devil in the temptations in the wilderness and the words that came from his lips as he hung on the cross. All scripture. Throughout his ministry, Jesus used the scriptures for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training the righteous. 
exactly as Paul tells Timothy in the reading we saw on the screen this morning. In many of the Queen's Christmas messages, and I think she is truly a servant of God, she uses the scriptures, often making reference to the New Testament and the life and work of Jesus. Some of you may remember one in the 1980s where with one of the Dimblebys she went through the Buckingham Palace stables and reflected on birth in a stable. So turning to the words of Jesus, as recorded by John, Jesus is addressing the Jewish leaders who would of course be well read in those scriptures. But they've been very selective in their understanding of the ancient scrolls. Jesus tells them, these are the very scriptures that testify about me. I have come in my Father's name. The leaders seem to accept the teachings of John the Baptist and Moses, but reject Jesus. And this, says Jesus, just does not make sense. It's not like Woolworths used to do where you could go and do a, a mix and match from the sweets there. It doesn't make sense. Jesus says, if you believe Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. Today, sadly, that mindset of those skeptical Jewish leaders still exists. The rejection goes on. Not only of Jesus, but of God who created the earth. Eight years ago, I was listening to Desert Island Discs, and I'm sorry I've mentioned that program before, but it's Radio 4. The guest was a well-known TV naturalist, not David Attenborough. As usual, towards the end of the program, the celebrity is offered two books, the Bible and the works of Shakespeare to take with him to the island. The celebrity said he was thinking of using those two for fuel. And I was shocked because I'd never heard that before from a guest. The interview's still out there, BBC Archives, October the 18th, 2013. Strangely, as I was preparing for this talk a few days ago and doing some background reading, and it's my, this is my friend again, Barclay, I came across this story. In Brazil, Senor Antonio of Minas bought a New Testament, which he took home to burn. He went home and found that the fire was out. Deliberately, he lit it, and he flung the New Testament onto it. But it wouldn't burn. He opened out the pages to make it burn more easily. It opened at the Sermon on the Mount. He glanced at it as he consigned it to the flames. His mind was caught and he took it back. He read on, forgetful of time, through the hours of night, and just, just as dawn was breaking, he stood up and declared, I believe. I hope and pray that the naturalist who wanted to burn the Bible will one day discover salvation through its pages. To be fair, 
he does an excellent job in the need to care for planet Earth. It does always seem strange to me that people who produce these wonderful documentaries of the beauty and diversity of the planet never make reference to the Creator. And it's odd. It's odd that because they will accept the writings of Charles Darwin and the theory of evolution. But they ignore a few crucial words in his conclusion. And it's right at the back, page, 100, page 507 in this edition that's over 100 years old. He's written this staggering piece of scientific work. But then he writes, last page, there is grandeur in this view of life with its several powers, having been originally breathed by the Creator into a few forms or into one. So the doors open in this scientist's mind that there is, there is a Creator. In the same way, the Jewish leaders accepted much of the writings of Moses, but they could not accept Jesus, like the naturalists who can't accept any superpower. Despite being given a Gideon's Bible at school, I think it was 1961, it was the awesomeness of the created world that turned me to search for God. I never went to Sunday school. Instead, on a Sunday morning, my dad took me onto the moors near Danby to collect sheep manure for making some special liquid at home in a big tub. And it was in the pools of the moor, the heather and the fronds of the bracken, the lapwings and the snipe and the curlew that stirred my spiritual awareness. For those who love nature but can't see God's hand in it, really puzzles me. The two are inseparable, God and the planet, the scriptures and Jesus. All things come from God. The Bible tells us this fundamental truth. There is a Bible where the verses which emphasize this connection are printed in green. And there are some brilliant essays in it, including one from the Pope. There is one man trained to be a priest when he has a revelation on holiday. It was in the Isles of Scilly. Uh, has anybody been to the Isles of Scilly? No, no, they sound quite wonderful from what he says about them. They're not in Yorkshire. No, no, no. Oh, that's, yeah, we, we don't. This is God's own county. We don't need to go any further. Um, so he tells what, at the Isle of Scilly, he's there in uh, self-catering in a cottage, builds up a few bags of rubbish, asks the locals, where shall I put this at the end of the holiday? And they say, oh, go to this certain place at the end of the island. Here's his story. So on a beautiful sunny day, August 8, 1989, I walked across the rabbit mown turf, past colonies of breeding seabirds and carpets of pink flowers until the path ran out beside a small bay. 
There below me was the island's rubbish. Bright plastics, rusting cars, tractors, tin cans, rotting food waste. Turning away from the smell and the rats, I slung out bags of rubbish over the cliff to join everything else. And as I did so, I had a clear sensation of God speaking, not with an audible voice, but with an inner awareness of my being asked, how do you think I feel about what you are doing to my world? The next few moments happened in slow motion. I felt as the rug had been pulled from beneath the structure of my cosy world. He carries on his training, became ordained, and is now one of the leading Christian con... con you know, the word's gone right out of my mind. I should always try and write these things down. One of the Christian leading conservationists. Makes you think that, and he wrote the introduction to the Green Bible. To conclude, Jenny last week spoke about expectations and it left me wondering what are God's expectations of us? And the answer is in the scriptures. Words spoken by God to Moses, Deuteronomy chapter 10. What does the Lord God require you to do? To fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve him, to serve the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord your God. If we love our Lord, we must love all that he created. The Bible teaches and instructs us to love the Lord, and that includes his wonderful, amazing planet, and to be good stewards of life on earth. Amen. Thank you, Peter, for that clear reminder of those amazing messages we get from that, our incredible book that we're celebrating today. Um, right, we're now going to have our next song. Uh, it's Before the Throne of God Above, Mission Praise 975. <laughs>
So on this Bible Sunday, let's first give thanks for the words of God that have come to us through Scripture. Thank you, Lord God, for revealing yourself to us through the writings of prophets and historians and apostles. As it says in today's reading from Isaiah, your word goes out from your mouth and does not return to you empty, but it accomplishes that which you have purposed and shall succeed in that for which you have sent it. Thank you that all scripture bears witness to Christ and makes us wise for salvation through faith in Jesus. Thank you for sending your only son, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh, to draw us into eternal life and a communion with you forevermore. And thank you now through the body and blood of your Son, that we can bring our prayers and petitions to you, you, the source and purpose and fulfilment of all of these words. So as we come to him now in intercession, can we affirm our response to these truths using the words of Peter? So when I say, Lord, to whom shall we go? Please respond, you have the words of eternal life. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Pray for the world, our leaders, and the huge decisions we all face at this key stage in human history. Sovereign Lord, we pray for the leaders of all nations as we approach the COP26 summit on the environment. Let there be unity and a common will to achieve the best outcomes for this world and all its peoples and creatures and plants, however hard that path may be. May our leaders and all of us come to recognize that this is not our world, but your world, created by your word, and which you pronounce to be good. Help us to play our part in preserving all that is good in your creation. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Merciful God, as COVID continues to be a threat to life and health across the world, we pray that all people worldwide would have access to the medicine and health care that is needed to counteract not just this virus, but the many other diseases that have not gone away and still present threats both here and in countries across the world with far fewer resources and very little health care. And we pray also for those huge problems our world faces, knowing that you, Lord, are able to do everything we can imagine and so much more. We may have too easily forgotten about the poverty and hunger, homelessness and violence that many of our sisters and brothers face daily, but you do not forget and your eyes are on all, especially on the weakest and poorest. Lord, bring succor and healing, bring peace and wholeness. Strengthen those who work to bring about good in this world and challenge us all to seek to do what we can practically to love all our fellow people in need. Lord, to whom shall we go? 
You have the words of eternal life. We pray now for families heading into the half-term break and for all working people. Loving God, for all those who have faced increased pressures at work, longer hours, more challenging conditions, as the working world has changed during the COVID pandemic. Give them breathing space, multiply the hours that they have, and bring opportunities for reflection and for rest. Lord, I pray for families, young people and children that they would have a restful half-term break this week ahead. We pray for all those in education who have had to contend with the many obstacles of teaching in COVID times, that they too would receive encouragement and strength to return from a half-term re-energized. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And as we approach the season of Advent, may we all take firm hold of the opportunities to engage anew with your words in the life of Jesus Christ and his incarnation. Please give us fresh insights and vision to take into the next chapter of your story here in St. Peter's. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We pray now for those who are unwell. Let us name each of those on our hearts to God in the silence. Dear Lord, we ask you to bring healing to each of those we have named before you. And we pray especially too for Keith's sister, Nina and her partner, Ben, for swift and complete healing from COVID, that they may know God's grace. And we pray for protection for Keith and Penny. May you quell any anxiety with your gentle and mighty peace. We pray also for Elizabeth, our queen, that you would strengthen her and restore her energy and health. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we also pray for comfort and peace for all those who have been bereaved. And we remember those who we may have lost, but who have themselves gained so much more and are now in the very presence of the Father. Today we remember especially Peter Burrow. We give you thanks for his service as church warden and teacher and for the fellowship and friendship that many in this church shared with him over the years. But we can encourage one another with the words of your promise that the dead in Christ shall rise first and we who are alive will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forevermore. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Heavenly Father, may your word accomplish all that you have purposed it for in this world and eternity. Speak and work through each of us this week that we would share Jesus Christ with all those we meet through our actions, our voices, and your very presence in us. So, merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it's, it's birthday time, but we're completely childless at the moment, so we better not attempt that one. Um, now, we have a notice bonanza today. We've got <laughs> billions of them, so I think probably the best thing is to start the notices while we're waiting for the kids to turn up. I'm not going to I will not. Oh, so they may not come. No, there's a big sign. Right, okie doke. Fair enough. So we're, we're almost child free zone. Not quite. Somebody at the back there. Um, so, are there any birthdays? Oh, there are some children, are there? Uh, they're coming. Oh, thanks, Hannah. <laughs> they are coming. So, Neil, do you want to come and. Uh... Just as the children come in, and um, you heard Matt make reference to Peterborough, I guess most people knew, but perhaps there are a few who didn't. Uh, Peter passed away peacefully 
Wednesday morning last at Beechwood Place Nursing Home. Um, a requiem mass and a funeral service for Peter will be held here on Tuesday the 9th of November at 1pm so make a note of that if you'd like to come and I guess many will. Uh, that will be followed by uh, his interment in Norton Cemetery where he will rest with Dorothy. So let us pray for his daughter Renata, son-in-law Philip and grandson Edward as well as for the wider family and all their friends as they mourn Peter's loss. Lord, comfort Peter's family and friends. Be with them as they contemplate his long and productive life and as they remember the many blessings he's bestowed not only on them but on this church and all who loved him. May he rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Tracy, do you want Tracy's got to notice for us. Next week is the last Sunday for those that want to bring a Children's Society box back this year. I had one left last week and the sticker had been removed from the bottom, so I don't know who it belongs to. So if it belongs to you, can you let me know after the service so I can get it back to you? Or if you know who left it, let me know. Thank you. Oh. Jenny's next. <laughs> Okay, folks, we have got a few notices. Um, I want to encourage you, if you've not signed up yet, to please do sign up for our Advent journey together, um, Finding Hope Under the Bethlehem Skies. It's looking at the story behind the story, the story of Ruth, um, who uh, is an ancestor to Jesus. So um, do encourage you to sign up at the back. And um, for those of you who are hello, uh, watching online, I want to meet with you or hear from you. Um, I want to know who is uh, accessing online services um, just to connect with you because we need to review whether we, how we continue with doing online services because it's a big piece of work. Um, so if you're watching online, uh, could you email me or phone me um, or say hello to me? It'd be really good to just uh, find out about that. Then coming up, um, I'll do the children one in a minute. We've got an opportunity on All Souls Day, which is Tuesday week, the 2nd of November. We'll have an evening service at 7 o'clock. If you'd like to come and remember those we've loved and lost, uh, there'll be a service in the evening to join together for that. There are a couple of um, opportunities for prayer coming up. I'm going to I spend Monday mornings praying for the parish and for you. The first hour, 9 till 10 in the morning, I'm going to spend in the side chapel, and it's open to anyone who wants to join me in praying for the parish, um, and it, it, particularly praying for the children's work and youth and um, pop-up cafe and all the things that our um, church um, serves and loves so brilliantly. we just like to um, bed with prayer and uphold those people who serve in prayer. So 9 to 10 every morning, every Monday morning uh, in the side chapel, you're welcome to join me. You don't have to, I'm quite happy to pray on my own. Uh, <laughs> but very importantly, Peter, thank you so much for weaving together the word and God's creation and our responsibility and love of neighbour. It is all interwoven and I thought you did that so beautifully. Peter and I are inviting you to join us this coming Saturday morning, perhaps in response to what you heard in this sermon. We're, we're calling you, St Peter's, to pray for the following week's COP26, the Climate Summit. It's a really key point in, uh, in our history as Matt led us in prayer. Um, and so we need to lift our leaders in prayer. 
I'm so glad I don't have a job like theirs, uh, but boy do they need our prayers. So from 10 o'clock on Saturday morning, probably be for a couple of hours, you can come and go. We might go for a prayer walk out in creation as we pray as well. Um, so do come if you can. Um, I've also printed, I do know the irony, um, some prayer pointers that I've taken from um, Compassion UK, you know, the the charity that supports children in need. There's some seven pointers for prayer that you could pray at home if you can't join us. You could pray one a week, one a day for a week during the summit. Um, so I encourage us to really, really pray for our leaders and for the world this coming week and um, week after next. So that's an uh, opportunity for that. And now that the children are back in, uh, we don't have capacity to organise an alternative to Halloween uh, because I've only just arrived. But I've spoken to other churches in the area and St. Michael's in Malton are offering a light and sparkle party, a celebration of light, which is on Friday the 29th of October. So it's an alternative to Halloween. I've got some flyers uh, if you'd like to... Um, go to that young people but it does require booking please book in if you want to, to go to that and here endeth my round of notices Kate <laughs> I think we'll, we'll take a short break and see if we've got any birthdays how about that <laughs> um, have we got any birthdays yes Alice <laughs> today yesterday Pretty close. Steve. Any more? Are there any more? Nope, just Alice. <laughs> As I, as I did it, I thought I might as well put it down. <laughs> um, right, so my notices are, we would like to start again with, with the welcome team that we had before and the sides people and all that sort of joined together. And we thought the easiest way, as we've had such a long break, is to start again. So I've put a list at the back. It's very homemade because I completely forgot to make one, so I did it very quickly this morning. Um, if, you would, uh, if you're interested in being part of the welcome team, then please sign up on the list with, a, with an email, preferably, or a phone number, whatever, whatever you've got. That would be great. And we, we, we'd like to say to new people to our church, you know, we'd love the help, but we want you to wait till we've had a chance to um, welcome you properly and have a, it's a, a welcome, tea. welcome tea. So, uh, and then... Uh, See, but Julie needs a week off. This is part of the reason, so do sign up. <laughs> Thank you. Um, right, I nearly said the bad word. I nearly said, I nearly said it. But what I'm going to say now is about our offering. <clears throat> so, uh, what we'd like to do is, is for people to put their offering in the basket on their way in, in future, if you can. I mean, if you forget, it doesn't matter. We'll still take it on the way out, I promise. But um, so that we can actually bring it up during the service and, and give thanks for all those offerings. And, and with, by it not going round, it's, it's easier because a lot of people don't give, you know, on a weekly basis. They do a standing order or whatever. So we thought it'd be really nice if people who are bringing stuff in put it in the basket we will bring it up and give thanks to God for it during the service and all the other gifts that are involved in that. So, uh, here we go. Where have we got to? Ah, last one. Hi. Um, next week after this service, there will be a meeting for anybody who's interested in helping with the Chris Tingle service. So uh, that's after 10 a.m. next week. Okay. Well, thank you very much. We made it. 
To crown all things, there must be love, to bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you very much. Let's uh, stand and share with one another a sign of God's peace. <laughs> So this morning we are um, celebrating communion together um, at this beginning of this new season and we're going to use Eucharistic Prayer H which you should have in your uh, booklets. I'm still finding my way round, please forgive me. And before we begin I just wanted to remind us that um, at the beginning of John, we are told that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Through him all things were made, all of creation, you and me. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that the life was the light of all mankind, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And it's that remembrance of the Word and the flesh that we're remembering through communion, that we are giving thanks and celebrating for that mighty power and that weaving together by God's grace. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation, in your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory. Send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. Without your whole church throughout the world, 
we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom power and your be yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. All those who love the Lord Jesus as their Saviour are most welcome to come and receive. Uh, if you're would rather receive just a blessing than just keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'll be glad to speak a blessing over you. Um, we'll be receiving just in one kind, just in bread today, and I will be masked um, so it's safe to approach. Let us pray together. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be washed through his most precious blood, and our souls washed through him. And that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. We pray together the prayer on the back of your sheet. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights, give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God the Son, who turned water into wine at the wedding feast in, at Canaan, transform your lives and make your, glad your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with those for whom you pray, today and always. Amen. Right, we're now going to have our, our final song, it's Our God, it's Mission Praise 1362, if you're so minded to read it.
Father, we thank you for this, these offerings and for those that have been uh, deposited to you uh, via the bank directly. And Lord, we ask that you will bless these and use these um, for the blessing of those in this church and in Norton and to the growing and building of your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.